Okay, we have something called inductive reasoning. That is basically drawing conclusion from a pattern. So we have drawing conclusion from a pattern. Ooh, y'all can't see it. The drawing conclusion from a pattern. All right. So my um, first pattern on this one, if I start with January to March to May, are we skipping every other? Yeah. Yep. So after May, what's the next pattern? June. After May is June, but the pattern states what? Oh, July. July to every other. All right. The next one, let's see our pattern for the next one. If I go from 7 to 14 to 21 to 28, the next number must be how many? 35. So then we have a challenge on number three then. On number three, something unique happens. If I have one and 16 and 81, isn't that like the perfect square of something? One times one, right? So then if I were to look at this from this, um, from one, two, three, and four, let's kind of see how we can manipulate this. I know one's not very helpful, but two to the power of something is 16. Any idea what that could be? It's not two squared four. to the power of four. Let's see if that is true for the next one. If I take three to the power of four, would that give, give us 81? No. Yep. If you're like, I'm not sure, do the math on the side. If I do four to the power of four, it is 256. So that means my next pattern must be five to the power of what? Four. Four. For me, um, for five to the power of four, I think it's easier for me to do 25 times 25. Anybody have 25 times 25 in your head? Boom, 625. If you're like, well, that was too fast, that's okay. You can do the tedious math on the side. Nothing wrong with it. For example, number four, we have two to four, we're adding two. Four to seven, we're adding three. How many are we adding next one? Four. So the next piece we're adding, five. So 11 plus five is how many? 16. Are we all okay with that so far? Okay, there's multiple patterns. On number five, because we have a fraction, the first thing that you have to do is make it a common denominator. So instead of one over six, one over six actually six will be our common denominator. So let's go to make the remaining and put six all the way across. How would I write one third as something over six? Two. How would I write one half as something over six? Three. And then my last one, how would I make two third? So then do I see a natural pattern here? We have one, two, three, four. The next one must be five over six. If all that makes sense so far, give me a thumbs up. You're good on this. You see the pattern with the common denominator, okay? So for the next one, I want you to circle every other. My every other is something to the other piece. If I go from one to eight to 27, aren't they all whole numbers? Yep. So I'm going to say this one is going to be, um, I see 1 to the power of 3. For 8, do you see 2 to the power of 3? And then for 27, we see what? 3 to the power of who? 3. three? So that means my every other is going to be a whole number. The fraction is extra information. So we have 4 to the power of 3. Can we do that by memory? How many? 64, good job. Okay, for the next one, it's actually a pattern called, anyone know the pattern of this one actually before I re reveal it? Fibonacci, very good. If you're like, I didn't, I didn't know what that was, it's fine. Okay, one plus one is gonna give me two. One plus two is gonna give me three. So basically two prior numbers when I add is a result of the next pattern. So if I do two plus three, that is five. So what two am I going to add for the next pattern? Five and eight, which is how many? Thirteen. Help your neighbor. All right, I'm going to move on to example number eight. Number eight. So my first pattern is a three-sided image. Then four-sided image, five-sided image. What's the one after that? Six-sided image. Let's see if y'all can draw a hexagon. I hear the extra talk, and I hope you're helping each other. 
So as if you're making a rectangle, give me four dots, four dots, and give me another dot on the right and the left, connect. Boom, we made a perfect hexagon. Now, is it okay if the picture isn't perfect? It's fine. I mean, mine, to be honest, is not that pretty. All right, and then our next term, we have something called the conjecture. It is a conclusion made from examples. From examples. It is a conclusion made from examples. Girls, the extra talking. Stay with me. So here's our conjecture. If 2 plus 4 is 6 and 4 plus 10 is 14, and I keep going, when I add two even numbers, the result is always what? Even. So given the example, I made a conclusion. Okay, if you're ready for the next page, give me a thumbs up. We are ready for the next page. Not yet? Okay, I'm going to move on to the back. Okay, Jensen, go ahead and read number 11 for me, please. If the side length of a square is double, then the area of the square is... So let's see. My side length of a square is double. So let's draw two squares. If I tell you my first one is one by one, what is the area? One. So if I double that side, it is two by two. What is two times two? So what happened to the original area to the new area? Did it, did it really actually? Yep, quadrupled. If you're like, it went four times greater, that's fine too. Quadrupled. Okay, let's put a big star in example number 12. And I'm gonna highlight something. By highlight, since I can't really highlight without making a mess, maybe I can try. I'm gonna highlight algebraic expression. Guys, I'm not done recording. It's right there. Okay, there's a mistake on the first one. So let's go ahead and fix the mistake that I have. I know I found it a while ago. Here it is. This number is two actually. Now, this is going back to Algebra 1. Back in Algebra 1, y'all remember writing linear equations? Y equals mx plus b? Let's practice that as a reminder. So I will, for part A, let's make a t-chart. And on my t-chart, you always start with a zero. And then I will use the first three numbers, one, two, and three. And here's how we actually read this. Two is my first number, correct? So I'm gonna put that next to one. Five is my second number. That's gonna be next to number two. So that means next to number three, I'm gonna write what? Eight. Eight. So let's see our pattern. How much are we going up each time? Three. So if you remember back in Algebra 1, it was 3x or 3n. For us, it's gonna be n because it says n term. And if I were to go back, what number is gonna land right here? Negative one. And let's kind of recall. Anytime your x value is zero, the other value is always a y-intercept. Oh and now here's how you can check. When I plug in any of the numbers, it has to be satisfied. So I'm going to check on this one. If I plug in three right here, what is three times three? Uh, nine. nine minus one is eight. eight. Do I get to the result? Yes, we do. Okay. What's that? Yeah, it's going to work out every single time as long as you get to the zero. The next one, let's try um, part B. On part B, girls, stay with me. We have zero, one, two, and three. And again, negative five is my first number. It goes next to the one. Negative two is my second number. goes to my number two. And what's going to go next to my three? One. So let's see our pattern. 
We are going up how many each time again? Three. three. So I'm going to write on here three and. So if I go back to the y-intercept, what number am I going to land on? Negative eight. Negative eight. Very good. So that means we have 3n minus 8. Now, it doesn't mean every single answer is going to be 3n of something. So let's see the next one. Make your t-chart again. We have 0, 1, 2, and 3. What number is going to go next to the 1? 3. What number is um, next to 2? 5. How about next to the 3? 7. So we know they're both going up by how many? So now we have 2n. If I go backwards, what number is going to go right here next to the zero? Uh, one. one. Done. So I want you to write this piece. The way I'm going to word it on your assessment, it's going to say expression in terms of n. If you see that phrase, this is what I'm wanting. And these are the expressions in terms of n. All right, I'm going to skip example number 13. For 14, Athena, let's go ahead and read that piece. Okay, so let's get two odd numbers. I'm going to say three is an odd number. Is seven also an odd number? What is three times seven? So let's see if we can make a conclusion. When I multiply two odd numbers, we always get what? Odd. And if you're like, well, let me look at examples with the negative, same thing. If I take negative 3 times, let's say, um, someone give me another odd number. Uh, negative 9. That's going to give me negative what? I mean, not negative, positive what? 27. Again, 27 is also odd. Are we good with that one? Okay. All right. So for the next piece, Johnny, will you read the instruction right above 15? Okay, so all of these, the answers are going to be false. So let's write out false all the way through. And then we have to reason it. So counterexample means, give me, another, give me an example that makes this false. So I'm going to underline counterexample. So let's see if that is true. The first one says, n to the power of 3 is always positive. So if I let n equal 1, and I say we have 1 to the power of 3, isn't that 1? Okay, that's not a counterexample. Let me give you a better one. What if I make n equal negative 1? Would that negative 1 to the power of 3 give me a positive or a negative? Negative. So here I gave you a counterexample. This example makes it false. Okay? Does that mean negative 1 is the only answer? Could I have chosen like negative what? 3, negative 4, okay? All right, Ava, let's read example number 16. So we know complementary means 90 degrees. Could I make it so that we have two congruent numbers that equal 90? Yeah. What two numbers? 45. Very good. If you have 45 degrees and another 45, that makes this statement false. Okay, we're ready for the last one. The last one I want you to do with your partner. Go talk to your neighbor. Dude. 